I didn't actually think that this was going to be possible when someone showed me, uh, but turns out it is. Welcome to my build showcasing how to bypass the Triggercraft cooldown. Let's get into it. Welcome. It's your friendly neighborhood Badger here, and I'm back for a little bit of a showcase of my new build. Now, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the mechanics of this build in a minute, but first I'm going to showcase the build, and you're going to try and guess what actually starts to happen in this build. So let's just jump into our white tier 7 marshes map. Now I know it's only tier 7, but we are level, what, 76 at the moment, so I'm still just leveling up. Uh, but you can see the build function, alright? Now you may have heard me talk uh, about this on Inspired Learning, you might already know, but uh, try and guess, uh, put a comment down below now as you're watching this, Try and guess how this works, and see if you're right uh, after uh, after I run the map and explain it, right? So I'm just running into this map, and I'm casting Blade Vortex, and I'm, you know, I'm uh, casting a bunch of Discharges, right? What's going on here? What's going on here? Some people would say cast on Critical from uh, Blade Vortex, and then uh, cast on Crit is proccing uh, Discharge. But you can't use cast on crit with a spell to a spell, so no, that's not what's happening there, right? Am I attacking somehow to use cast on crit? No, no I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Um, there's a really interesting uh, mechanic happening right here that seems like it should be very unintended, but actually it is intended, confirmed by GGG on a couple of different occasions, right? So this is how the build's working. Uh, we'll jump to this boss here. I'm going to put in concentrated effect just to see the full damage. Uh, so let's just, uh, wait, this one here, increased area of effect, concentrated, uh, concentr concentrated effect. We'll jump in here, I'll just generate a few charges, chuck that on you, and then just like that, right? And then just blow him up uh, as we sit there and start casting our Blade Vortex. So, what the freaking heck is going on with this build? What is going on? Well, yes, we are using Discharge. We're using a staff, as you can see here, with some pretty cool MTX, uh, and we're using a staff that has um, you know, with a bunch of other mods on it, we're using Fire Burst as well, which is a bit of damage uh, fractured there. It's a pretty cool staff, but the main thing here is trigger a socketed spell when you use a skill with an 8 second cooldown. Now, we do have Discharge socketed in here. So why is Discharge proccing like 4 times a second instead of once every 8 seconds? Like, surely something is very, very bugged there, right? Surely I've somehow, you know, uh... Did it uh, make made an unintended mechanic and GGG is gonna ban me? Uh, uh, you know that's that's probably gonna happen, right? Well, uh, actually, no. Um, there's a really interesting mechanic uh, that endless misery, the endless misery cobalt jewel, the threshold jewel for discharge gives us, which turns discharge's cooldown to 250 milliseconds, so once every uh, 0 0.25 seconds. Now this actually overrides the cooldown. From the dis from from the trigger craft on a weapon, right? Now you're, you're saying like Badger, you shouldn't be playing around with this. Like GGG, they're 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 really come on, they're cracking down. Well, um, I found something pretty interesting, uh, and also Mark on Reddit has also confirmed the similar thing here. So uh, someone is talking about uh, the jewel always giving a 0 0.25 second and is not mitigated in any way. So increased cooldown recovery and all this kind of stuff as well. Uh, and some other stuff uh, uh, talked about in here, um, Jayton from GGG is basically saying this is intended. Without the jewel, discharges cooldown is 2 seconds, and the, this is a modifiable value and can be higher or lower based on sources of cooldown recovery rate. With the jewel, discharges cooldown is set to 250 milliseconds. Um, now this is not necessarily explicitly stating about the uh, trigger, but uh, there is also, I was trying to find it, but trust me, Mark on uh, Reddit has also commented on the exact interaction and said, hey, look, yes, we know this, we know this is happening, and we're fine with it, right? So, I'm going to use the build, and I'm going to prove to Mark that probably shouldn't be in the game. Uh, we're going to get a ton of damage, as you did see some pretty insane damage right there. Um, I've still got a bunch to get on this character. So, how are we generating, uh, how are we generating charges and everything like that? Um, so, we've actually got a Vols Protector. Now, this is a budget version that I'm using here. A Vols Protector to gain a power charge for each enemy you hit with a critical strike. And then also using power charge on crit uh, up here as well. So, we've got, like, basically 1.5 power charges per critical strike. Then, on our helmet, we have a 10% chance to gain up to our maximum power charges when we gain a power charge. And 25% on Inya's Epiphany, meaning that every power charge we gain, we have a 35% chance to gain up to our maximum. 
coupled with Blade Vortex hitting many times, uh, hitting about two, maybe even three times every uh, 0.25 seconds, we're pretty much guaranteed to hit maximum power charges. Then what we do is we convert those power charges. Uh, once they get consumed, we generate endurance charges and then generate more power charges with Vol's Devotion. And then we're basically fully stacked on power and endurance charges uh, like this. So we can go and kill some more enemies and keep an eye up on the top here. Uh, and you can see uh, the power charge and endurance charges should stay pretty high up. Let's do an ultimatum, shall we? And, and you can see everything stay up pretty high. Now, the big downfalls to this build right now is I'm still working on the defenses, uh, but that's going to come with levels. Uh, the damage is just going to be astronomical once we start getting more jewel sockets and everything like that, uh, getting a lot more crit multi. Uh, and then the other thing is move speed. As you can see here, our move speed is not amazing, so we're going to be trying to figure that, figuring that out. You can go the Assassin's route, uh, uh, the Assassin Ascendancy, to get a little bit more power charge generation and some more move speed through Elusive and everything like that. Uh, but honestly, uh, it feels pretty nice right now, and I just need to solve a little bit more of all of that, all right? That's pretty much all I really have to say about the build. It's seeming like it's going to be crazy, crazy boss damage. Uh, but we're really going to see how far we can push this over the next week or so. So come and watch us on Twitch. Uh, that's going to be pretty fun to uh, check this build out. Uh, say hi, everyone who's uh, watching live at the moment. Uh, as you can see the chat over there, I am recording this live. And if you enjoy this kind of content, Hit that sub button down below. It really does mean the world to me. Uh, means that more people can see this cool ass content, right? So uh, let's finish this ultimatum. But uh, yeah, that's. I think. I think that's pretty much. Uh, I think that's pretty much everything I do have to say, right? Um, now, uh, yes. Basically, you do have to click every time to trigger, or at least hold down Blade Vortex, and every time you cast Blade Vortex. Ah, oh, Mr. John, thank you so much for the Prime sub. Um, every time you cast Blade Vortex, it will trigger a discharge if you have, uh, if you have power charges or endurance charges, right? So, yeah. Um, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, I'm gonna talk in later videos about how I crafted the staff, but there are budget versions that you can use of the staff. Honestly, any staff that has, like, let's say, plus three to fire, cold, or lightning gems and a trigger craft on it is gonna be totally fine. You can even use a cane of cooler mark that has, uh, like, crit multi when near a rare enemy, um, the trigger, but basically the mandatory thing is trigger and endless misery, and that is about it. Oh, and I guess Vols, Vols Devotion, Vols Protector as a budget. Once I get some more power charge generation, I can switch my Vols Protector out for a Carcass Jack for more damage, more AoE, and life, and everything like that as well. Or I could go for, you know, an influence chest for even more life and everything like that as well. That's the build. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoy my messy inventory over there as well. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, Badger is putting the paste bin down below so you can have a look at it. See ya.